and welcome back to the Navigating Your Mental Health Compass video series. My name is Sarah and I'm a registered clinical counselor living and working in Vancouver, BC on the traditional unceded and ancestral territory of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil nations. Navigating Your Mental Health Compass is an eight-part video series that provides evidence-based education and strategies from acceptance and commitment therapy, also known as ACT, to help you build greater self-awareness, learn effective strategies to better your mental health, and move beyond obstacles to live a life with meaning and purpose. This is episode five in this series. If you haven't already watched episodes one through four, I encourage you to go back and do so. Although the episodes don't necessarily need to be watched sequentially, I do reference content from previous episodes. So far, we have covered the ACT core processes of present moment awareness in episode two, which is also known as mindfulness, acceptance from episode three, which is a strategy that helps us cope with what's out of our control, and cognitive diffusion, episode four, which is a coping tool to help us cope with difficult thoughts. In this episode, I'm gonna cover the ACT strategy of the observing self, which is one of the six core processes of ACT. The observing self is the part of our consciousness that can step back and observe our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and experiences without getting entangled in them or being defined by them. It's the aspect of ourselves that can notice what's happening within us and around us from a perspective of non-judgmental awareness. You may notice some similarities between this concept and the concepts we covered in episode two, present moment awareness, and episode four, coping with unhelpful thoughts, in which I review the coping strategy of cognitive diffusion. Present moment awareness and the observing self are closely related concepts, but they focus on slightly different aspects of mindfulness and self-awareness. The observing self and diffusion are also two key components of ACT that work together to help individuals develop greater psychological flexibility and reduce the impact of unhelpful thoughts and emotions. And while they share similarities, they also have distinct features. I'll go over what makes the observing self core concept unique later on in this episode. As you may recall, ACT has six core psychological processes, three of which we've already gone through. In this episode, I will review a fourth core psychological process in ACT, the observing self. I will share more about how this strategy is helpful as well as how to practice it so that you can continue to build your toolbox of coping strategies. The Navigating Your Mental Health Compass video series uses the metaphor of a compass. The compass metaphor is a powerful visualization tool used to understand the relationship between different aspects of the self and one's inner experiences. The observing self is metaphorically associated with the east direction, just as the east direction on a compass reflects the rising sun and the beginning of a new day, the observing self brings awareness to the ever-changing landscape of thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations, and encourages us to approach our experiences with a sense of openness and possibility. Similar to how the East Direction provides a sense of direction and orientation, the observing self offers guiding awareness that helps individuals navigate their emotional experiences. Okay, so let's dive deeper into this concept. The observing self is the part of our consciousness that can step back and observe our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and experiences without getting tangled in them or being defined by them. It's the aspect of ourselves that can notice what's happening within us and around us from a perspective of non-judgmental awareness. There's a metaphor, yes, another metaphor, ACT is full of metaphors, called the sky metaphor that is commonly used to describe the concept of the observing self. The sky metaphor helps us understand the relationship between our thoughts and the observing aspects of our consciousness. In this metaphor, the vast expanse of the sky represents awareness itself. Just as the sky encompasses everything within it, awareness encompasses all of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and experiences. Clouds represent thoughts and emotions. Within the sky, these clouds representing thoughts and emotions drift by. And like clouds passing through the sky, our thoughts and emotions come and go. They rise, change, and eventually dissipate. The observing self is likened to the sky itself, the expansive, unchanging aspect of consciousness that remains constant regardless of the weather. 
which in this metaphor is represented by the fluctuating thoughts and emotions. The observing self is the aspect of our awareness that can observe the different weather systems without becoming identified with them. By recognizing that we are the sky, which is the perspective of the observing self, rather than the different weather systems that occur within the sky, we gain perspective and awareness of our thoughts and emotions rather than becoming entangled and fused to them. This perspective allows us to observe our experiences with greater clarity and calmness. The sky metaphor emphasizes the non-judgmental nature of the observing self. Just as the sky does not judge or cling to any particular cloud, rainstorm, or sunny day, the observing self observes thoughts, emotions, without getting caught up in them or reacting to them. Let's play around with this metaphor a little bit more. I find it helpful to imagine all the different weather systems that are simultaneously happening all over the world. In some parts of the world, it's hot, humid, and sunny. And in other parts, it's cold, windy, rainy, or snowy. And of course, there's every weather system in between those two extremes. No matter what's happening with the weather, the sky holding all of these weather patterns does so without interfering, being overwhelmed, or being disconnected. The sky is the container that is simply holding all the different weather systems. This metaphor demonstrates that above the fluctuating weather conditions lies a rising, unchanging awareness that can observe and hold these experiences with clarity and compassion. The observing self demonstrates to us that we have a similar part of ourselves that can notice our experiences from a distance without disconnection and without being consumed and overwhelmed. The ability to take the stance of the observing self is helpful for a number of reasons. First of all, enhanced self-awareness. The observing self facilitates greater self-awareness by allowing us to step back and observe our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This increased self-awareness can lead to deeper insight into our thought and behavior patterns. Secondly, increased emotion regulation. By observing our emotions without judgment, we can develop more effective ways of coping with difficult emotions. Rather than reacting impulsively or getting caught up in emotional reactivity, we can respond to emotions with greater clarity and self-compassion. Thirdly, improved coping. Similarly, the observing self enables us to cope more effectively with stress and adversity. By reminding ourselves that we don't have to be in the center of the storm, but rather we can be the sky that holds the storm, we can build our resilience and resourcefulness. Next, values, clarity, and alignment. We haven't covered the ACT core process of values yet, but when we do in the next episode, you'll see how connecting to the observing self can help us clarify our values and align our actions to our values, which gives us a greater sense of purpose and fulfillment in life. Enhanced interpersonal relationships. The observing self can improve interpersonal relationships by prompting empathy, compassion, and effective communication by helping us become more aware of our own internal processes, we can better understand and empathize with others' perspectives, which can lead to deeper connections and reduced conflict in relationships. Ultimately, the observing self perspective promotes psychological flexibility, which is the ability to adaptively respond to our situations. All right, so let's just pause here for a moment. The concept of the observing self is somewhat existential and it may sound familiar to a couple of the ACT core processes we've covered already. So let's start with how the observing self is different from mindfulness, which is the topic we covered in episode two. The main difference between mindfulness and the observing self lies in their focus. The observing self refers to the aspect of consciousness that can observe thoughts, emotions, and experiences in a way that involves stepping back. Mindfulness, also known as present moment awareness, involves fully engaging with an experience in the present moment. It's about being immersed in the experience rather than observing it. The observing self may also sound familiar to cognitive diffusion, which was the topic covered in the previous episode. The purpose of the observing self is to cultivate self-awareness and perspective on thoughts, emotions, and experiences. Diffusion techniques, on the other hand, aim to reduce the impact of unhelpful thoughts and help us relate to our thoughts in a more flexible and less rigid manner. Don't worry too much about the exact similarities and differences between the observing self and the other core processes in ACT. In reality, all these concepts are connected. 
Let's now turn to strategies on how you can practice the observing self in daily life. It's always my goal to give you concrete tools and strategies. First up, metaphors and analogies. I've talked a lot about the sky metaphor. Metaphors help us understand abstract concepts and I find metaphors particularly helpful for understanding the observing self. So another metaphor for this concept is the movie theater. In this metaphor, you can imagine your thoughts, emotions, and experiences appearing on a movie screen and the observing self is in the audience watching the movie from their seat. In this metaphor, you can imagine the observing self watching what's going on on the screen instead of being one of the central characters in the movie itself. The observing self has a larger perspective and can take in more from their seat in the audience. Next, observing your thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations periodically throughout the day. In order to zoom out and gain perspective, one strategy for practicing the observing self is to acknowledge our thoughts as thoughts, emotions as emotions, and physical sensations as physical sensations. This helps us move from being in our experience to observing our experience. And finally, the ACT core processes that we've covered in this series so far can help facilitate connecting to the observing self perspective. These include practicing mindfulness, engaging in acceptance techniques such as compassion and physicalizing, and practicing unhooking from our thoughts. I encourage you to pick one of these observing self strategies and just start trying it right away. As I've said in previous episodes, we must be willing to practice new coping strategies regularly in order to benefit from them. My personal go-to observing self strategy is to engage with the sky metaphor and imagine my thoughts, emotions, physical sensations, and experiences at different weather systems and to zoom out and take the perspective of the sky as the container that holds all of these experiences without being overwhelmed or avoidant of them. Okay. So we're gonna start to move towards wrapping up today's episode. Um, And you may recall that I usually cover when certain strategies may not be helpful. While the observing self strategy is generally beneficial for most people, there may be certain situations or contexts where it might not be as helpful or appropriate. So for example, becoming overly focused on observing your thoughts and emotions to the point of disengaging from taking necessary actions or addressing underlying issues would not be an effective use of the observing self. Secondly, becoming stuck in a cycle of rumination or excessive analysis when engaging in the observing self may lead to constant self-monitoring and that can increase anxiety and indecision, which would also not be helpful. For individuals with complex trauma histories and severe mental health conditions such as dissociative disorders or psychosis, the observing self strategy may need to be adapted or modified so as not to exacerbate symptoms of these presentations. And finally, the effectiveness of all coping strategies can be influenced by cultural beliefs, values, and contextual factors. So please, of course, consider your own context and what makes sense for you. So although the observing self strategy in ACT is helpful in numerous situations to develop greater self-awareness, cope with difficult emotions, manage stress, improve relationships, and enhance overall well-being, this strategy, like all strategies, does have its limitations, and it's important to be aware of these limitations and use the strategy when it's going to be helpful and beneficial. At the beginning of this episode, we talked about the observing self as metaphorically associated with the east direction of the compass metaphor that we've been using to weave together the content from the episodes in this Navigating Your Mental Health Compass series. Similar to how the east direction provides a sense of direction and orientation, the observing self offers guiding awareness that helps individuals navigate their emotional experiences. I really appreciate you joining me in this fifth episode. Up next in episode six, knowing what's important to you, we cover the act core process of values. And this is one of my personal favorites. So again, my name is Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me. Please be sure to check out the videos, a part of the Navigating Your Mental Health Compass series on YouTube. They're all there for you.